Yeah, if we bring up Jeff Garland, Rick always says, Skyfest. I I wouldn't even walk down the street if Marquis said Skyfest. (laughs) Yeah, he... uh, are you wearing and the shirt? Wrote, no, you and then he wrote the thing and he goes, he goes, I'm a fan, fucker. And I was like, yeah, no, because, me too. I'm like, sure, I don't have a problem with you. Are we rolling? We are, yeah. Oh, shit, okay, all right. Don't, you gotta let me know, Lee. I'm confused. Right, you took, yesterday we had uh, Tony Hinchcliffe mm-hmm. and he could only do 10 minutes because he had a good set on TV. And so, <laughs> fucking, uh, we had Dice call in. I was gonna make him do it tonight. We don't have a TV. Perfect. That's fine. Whoa. I've never even seen that here. That's like special. It's all that from a liquor store. That's and the now, t- now with 1% juice. <laughs> Tell me. This is the Comedy Store Podcast. We have Big J Okerson today. Are you going to shut the fuck up? We're starting. It's not. I'm kidding. How it works here. Is this thing that nice? We're doing kosher? And they're quartz? What the fuck is happening? This oh, place? this must be a big deal. We put the leaf in. Yeah. <laughs> Did we put in the leaf? Okay. I put, I put a leaf in myself to expand. <laughs> I like to open oh, up. I'm not even batted around the idea of having a table with a leaf anymore. <laughs> Where do you keep the leaf? Do we really need the coasters for this fucking table? <laughs> it's got Mitzi's jizz on it. I don't oh, see why. There's razor marks still in it. That's why you don't want to get it fucked <laughs> up. This water glass already has lipstick on it, which is hilarious. <laughs> oh, lipstick. my God. I'm going to throw up. We get. I'm not drinking that. That water's like... Water. Aaron Brockovich brought it in. I loved you never gave up water. Water. I And can't. I appreciate that. Good for you. Uh, I, I got shamed out of it pretty young in New York. But I, I always use it as an example because people go, you don't really have the Philly accent too much. You can fall into it, but I don't have it much anymore. Yeah. And I go, but trust that every time I say water, I, it's, I'm it's i focusing on the, the word. <laughs> it's like someone stuttering. What? I, like before it's coming sure. up in a sentence. Yeah, so I yeah, go, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to, I think uh, if it's hot enough, I'm going to, uh, go, here we go, dude. Here, <laughs> you I'm going to jump about- right into the uh, water. <laughs> I, I've, I got shamed out of it as well because I was trying to be an actress and they, I was at Temple taking classes. I was Big <laughs> acting program there. Dude, right? listen. A lot of great. They're not going to help you with that accent. <laughs> you haven't lived until you've done Shakespeare in North Philly in a fee lawsuit. Trust. <laughs> so, Yo, I, Romeo. Yo, Romeo. Yeah, what do you do? We need yeah, you Romeo. coming out or what? <laughs> yeah, you live on the other side of Tasker. My parents say I can't date you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're from I'm an Irish below, family. I'm below Oregon. Yeah, my, my Italian uncle says I can't date you because your dad's a piece of shit, I, Irish kid. No Irish, no Italian, nothing. Everybody hates everybody. People are like, oh, it's just black and white. No, no, no. It's, we didn't have that over. We don't have Italians and Irish in California. That's like a disgusting. thing growing that's up. That's why we no have one like likes Different it types of Asian people. And Hispanic. Oh, yeah. And Hispanic, and that's what we got. You're lousy with Hispanics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you didn't even bring them in. This wow. is Steve well, Fury. Do you guys know each other? We met. We met too. Yeah. Okay, because okay. he's guest hosting for me. It's very exciting. Steve Fury. Hell we yeah. have Big J Okerson on the Comedy Store podcast. This is our first time, right? First time. Oh, man. Rick's going to be really pissed. Anyway, <laughs> we'll have you back. Because Skank he, fast. Skank when you see him, I said, Skank fast. <laughs> That's all he can say every time we bring up Jeff Garland. But wait, I was telling you about the temple um, that they were like teaching. We're doing... I'm playing one of the witches, right? And I'm, I, and she goes, your accent is so, we can't understand you. I'm like, oh, Shakespeare can't fucking understand me? So they made me take American Standard English. <laughs> and I was practicing while working at a city pool in South Philly. <laughs> and so I blew the whistle and I'm like, get out of the water. <laughs> Everybody looked like, the fuck? Is she having a stroke? Like it was bad. Get out of the water. So get out of the water. But it was definitely, I felt my, I felt like I hurt my jaw saying it. Dude, having to learn anything kind of no. diction in Philadelphia is just a hilarious place. What part did you grow up? I would like a cheesesteak with <laughs> mu- with mushrooms. Oh yeah, you say with and not wit. With they'll throw you right with out of the line. The mushrooms, <laughs> red leather. May I get with provolone cheesesteak? I'll take it with or without. <laughs> So uh, yeah, he with grew up in fried California. onions. Yeah, I have nothing. We don't have any weird stuff. Like, we just say hello a lot, and then cuss, and then like cuss. Asian people are allowed to say the n word here. Who's the celebrity who's made hella the thing? Because hella's made its way. My daughter says hella? hella, and she's New York her whole life. Hella made its way across. Hella, 
It was a very like Sacramento, it was Northern yeah. California thing. Yeah, right? yeah, California yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's caught. I'm some yeah, rapper, happy. some young some rapper young made rapper. it something. We did it finally. It. We brought it our culture hella, to the masses. Hella, hella. I can't even think of it. Like I can't even think of how to First use it. First of all, Meisner technique in Philly accent is gonna be the funniest thing. You have ever, a blue house. Ever. You have a blue house. <laughs> Your house is blue. Your house is blue. <laughs> It's Your a house. great shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's a great shirt. It's a great shirt. <laughs> yeah, we got to get gas. You got to get gas. <laughs> Is that hairspray in your hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going on my cousins. You have a boat. I got a boat. You have a boat. You have a boat. House Did you ever take Meiser? Once. Apparently, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Good. That's so I fun. hated all of it. The Are guy, you serious? It was my favorite. No, my I didn't really, They were like, you should take acting class. You do comedy. You should take acting classes. I'm like, okay. I didn't know it had anything to do with acting, but all right. And I took this class, and to me, it just felt like school again. I just didn't like the whole thing. And then I just got like, I felt like the things were silly. Like the, oh, of course, the, 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 game, the games player was silly. Sure. Yeah, was embarrassing. And then one of the ones they did, I just got humiliated. Like a guy, they want us to do a scene. Like, you know, it's like doing an action while you do a scene. So it's like, you, yeah, yeah. you two are going to come like uh, arm wrestle, which I wish they wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. I'm terrible at arm wrestling. <laughs> but your hands are behind your yeah, back. terrible at it. What? No, it was arm wrestle, but, uh, you know, start like a dialogue. Uh, and then go. Okay. And this guy, this big black dude, Sean McLean, and he goes sit down and he goes, yes, and we we lock hands, and they go, okay, like and you know action, and he just goes, I mean quiet. He goes, fucking hate you, motherfucker. Now here's the thing, I should I should preface. <laughs> this is a junior college. I should preface. This you is a comic. him in the balls. You know when you talk uh, as comics, we talk incessantly, nonstop, in different circles, yeah. shit talk other people. Yeah. <laughs> And this is definitely a young, we were all young comic. Open oh, micers. he was a comic as well. Yeah, okay, and I just knew I him it. from around the scene, but it was a guy that, you know, just five seconds after he was gone in any direction, you'd be like, this guy sucks, right? <laughs> and all this stuff. <laughs> and like, uh, and so I, I don't think he knew anything, but it's that moment, because we were always fine, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was like yeah. a person like, this guy wouldn't know. I don't have any real problem with him. It was just yeah. making fun of his comedy or whatever. And then we did that thing, and he just goes, fucking hate you, motherfucker. And I went, huh? And he just pinned my arm real quick. <laughs> And they were like, good. I'm like, what do we do? <laughs> she goes, that was good. Real and reactions. I go, that was a real reaction. You looked very weak. Like, weak that. in that. It's yeah. very good that you did that. You're going to get an Oscar for yeah. this. Oh, it just like all shit. felt is silly. It is so silly. I've, I mean, I've never I've just never gotten the comfort of audition. I think when I've been in stuff, mm -hmm. I can like do it. I think I do well. People just ask you to be I think in I do it. well. Yeah, but anytime it's like, go and press these two people in a room. I'm like, I don't know. It's like, make a choice. Like, can I go home? <laughs> I'm not going to get this. Choice is definitely home. <laughs> I'm not going to get this. The closest I got to anything big ever like that was a screen test out here for This Is Us. Oh, my God. And they brought me in to audition. Were you a murderer? What were you going to play in that? No. Uh, sadly enough, I got there and I saw the, all the other roly polies in that audition room. <laughs> and then I saw the girl. Chrissy Metz. Yeah. And I was like, they go, this is who you're going to be doing the scene with. Was she in the room or just she oh, was yeah. in the vicinity? Because you're going to be doing the scene with. I go, I go, all right, that must be a PA or something. She... I'm like, I just have some gigantic woman <laughs> filling in. Because they She's probably She's incredible, don't think... but she is gigantic. She's incredible, sure. But I went, there's no way they think I <laughs> would be with this woman. <laughs> and uh, I auditioned and I didn't get it. And when they told me I didn't get it, they go, uh, because I was kind of bummed about that. I was like, wait, that's the that's actual, a huge that's show. the girl yeah. on the thing. Well, who knew at the time? It was before oh, it came out. Before oh, before it came yeah. out. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, so I was like, and they're like, you didn't get it. And they go, the reason they gave, they said you were too thin and handsome for the part. <laughs> so I was like, nice. I go, even if that's not true, that's a nice way to get let down. They yeah, were smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the show came out and it did its whatever initial episode run. And then they picked it up. It got picked up, I guess. And my manager called me and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, dude, great news. That producer really liked you a lot. So he'd like you to come back and read yeah. for another role. And I went, oh, let me guess. Is it going to be the guy she cheats on the her current fat boyfriend <laughs> with? And he goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get that part either. <laughs> but that time, they didn't say I was too thin and handsome. They didn't say that this time. Oh I had one where I had to do three different rounds of air guitar. <laughs> no. So I so the first one was by myself. It's only a few notes. Man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, they would say they You're said like, they ah, do <laughs> they said do five songs. So the first one I'm by myself. I'm like, I can handle this. And I do it in five different songs. I'm supposed to be a magical janitor. And what? It's like a guy who teaches kids how to be in a rock band. It was for a Disney show. I was gonna say it's either kids or David yeah. Lynch. <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm like a man. So you put you guys in the audition doing this outside in the lobby. <laughs> Is, is it human here? Yeah. Because my action's off. <laughs> the first one I had to do it by myself. Then I had to do it with three people. And they never tell me I had to do it again. They gave me lines. I was like, okay, I don't have to do that again. And I didn't. Then the last one, I went to the third round. It was me and two other guys. And I had to do it in front of like 55 people. All in the middle. And they didn't even have music this time. And they go, this time, do do rock and roll. Oh. And so then I'm doing rock and roll. And I had to do a hip hop one. And I did not know how to... Do a guitar hip hop. That's why I don't understand uh, auditioning. They're like, "Can you play this part in the worst of conditions possible?" Yeah. Like, no, because <laughs> so I'm not point... there. It's like, okay, we're in this little box, but uh, <laughs> right now you're in jail alone, on the verge of killing yourself. Because I'm not there, dude. I would prefer to have the bars around me. <laughs> I promise, though. So. Put me in those put bars. Put me in those bars. I'll cry for you. Yeah, but I'm having a hard a time just talking to someone going. You know, I mean, that's also the thing. The person reading with you is always like, but I can't. You murdered my whole family. How could I ever love you? <laughs> and you got to be like, because, Margaret. You got like, to keep all this oomph. And like, well, I'm leaving and I'm taking the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a loser. I just know I have a hard time with it. I hate how you can hear the dude in front of you. What do you mean? <laughs> that's the worst. Like, you can hear the other person audition. Oh, Everyone yeah, yeah, I've been. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm like trying to outdo him for the people in the back. And I'm like, do I be louder or smaller? That's the worst, is knowing that six other guys trying to get my shit Or somebody's to crushing your yes. hair and laughs. Then you go in as fucking dead. And you're like, oh. I did. I would love to Same do guys it. guys in this room? I would, love to, I would love to do it. Is it new people is this in a here? new audience? Yeah, what happened? They bring new... Can we get the last guys back in here, please? <laughs> I would love to do like... S my daughter would be so stoked if I did an SVU episode. It's such a New York thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So one time, though, I auditioned for that. But I didn't get it. But I remember that audition's weird because Chelsea Pierce in New York... And they're auditioning. Okay. It's all kinds of different stuff. A lot, yeah. But characters for SVU. Mm -hmm. And what was funny was walking in that room just like as myself and sitting down, you know, my two lines or three lines, I know them. So I'm just like waiting there. <laughs> Can we get out of here? And every time they would call it, there was 15 girls in that room. I mean, that were wearing, I mean, panties showing, short oh, skirts. Yeah. And their tits, because they're going to play victims of some kind yeah. of thing. And it's just that keep constantly, go how jarring it is when you're sitting there, I'm playing Candy Crush. <laughs> and they're like, you know, Rebecca Stone or whatever, come in. And she's like, oh, and they put their thing, they come in, and then the door closes, and they're like, thank you, Rebecca Stone. I'm like, stop raping me! You're killing and raping me! And then they walk around, and she's like, thank you, guys. It's so nice. Like, Good luck, everybody. And they walk around, and go, what the fuck? And another girl's like, oh, I'm next. Stop it! You're murdering me in front of my family! I don't like anal! <laughs> yeah. what? Stop, you're raping me so hard! Thank you guys so much. This was a dream come true. So nice. I'm really, fingers crossed, I feel good about that one. Good luck with the project. <laughs> yeah, so great. Or when I, did, I auditioned for that Wu-Tang American Saga thing on who was one of the last things I auditioned for. And I went in there and like the whole, to tell you about it, talk about not getting a part when I think my part was just a white guy who says the N-word plenty. Right. <laughs> like, I, get, like, I, I got, got this. this. And I, I did the, yeah, I did the, I did the audition and they're like, they're like, thank you. And I'm like, you're going to like burn that tape. Like if, <laughs> it was like, I came in here and had some real thoughts about black people. <laughs> You guys told me to riff. I said some stuff. <laughs> riff and just dance like there's no black people in the room. Dance like you don't have to look around. <laughs> That's crazy. I want to see the behind closed door, Jay. <laughs> How do you really feel? Give me that Philly energy. And other, it was funny when that show came out. I couldn't even find. I watched that show. I couldn't find the, the part. Oh, yeah. I couldn't find the part. Of what, it was a guy trying to be. It was a it was like a wigger kid trying to be cool. Yeah, yeah, of course. With the Rizzo in like a record show. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it wasn't like uh well no, it was I thought it was interesting about that show. Do you remember? I don't know how like big this guy was ultimately. Do you remember Dr. Dirty John Valby? Is yeah, that of course. Name to him? yeah, yeah. I've done big shows. I've opened for him. <laughs> okay. That guy had a song. It must have been it's the eighties or something. No, well, one of them is particular. It's it's the strangers in the night and it's N words in the night. And I mean, it's not crazy that I didn't know about that. I know who he was before this, but there's an episode of uh, that Wu Tang thing where, like, the the pizza shop owners, mm -hmm. the mafia guys <laughs> that also own the pizza shop, like, come in to, like the get somebody for stealing or something, right. in the and they go into like the Riz's mom's house, and and their big thing is they put this tape in the cassette deck and start playing, it, and it's John Valby's song doing that, and I was like, what? And we had to wow. find out what it was, and it's John Valby, and we had to find it because. What I'm blowing, talk about the times changing. Yeah, yeah. It's not even that this, these lyrics are, 
hilarious. <laughs> but no, they are. Uh, I know exactly uh, what you're talking uh, about. They're, it's it's hilarious because you're like, dude, you're go, you're saying all the like, this is your like, uncle and you on a fishing trip. Yeah. shit. <laughs> I go, this isn't. Somebody really left the recorder on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. During dinner, so and this is weird. It, but it's just funny that at the time, like. I don't know what audience he can get in front of now that wouldn't even be like, forget not think it's fu funny, sure. Even people think it's funny would just kind of be like now, like, whoa, buddy. Yeah, Like, yeah. hang on. Easy. Because what's crazy about that recording is it's only a live recording of that song. Mm. And, you know, like, and words in the night. <laughs> you know, how can you see them? And I'm like, nah! And they don't even rhyme with exam thing. Right. And, and words in the night. They'll kill your mother. <laughs> so you're like, What? <laughs> But it's hilarious and how ridiculous. And I bet it crushed because I've only it, that's heard what's crazy it. About it. It's yeah. murdering right. in this recording. I'm like, this crowd, like, they're like, oh, that's good fun. <laughs> like, like I don't know how I, if I was there live, I would have been like, oh, shit. Like, I, I might Probably even be. Yeah. It's almost what it's showing you that I think there was in a the time, time yeah, where you right. wouldn't have. The, not that you would have. It, I don't think it meant that you agreed with what he was saying. Of he's, course he's, not. he's making a ridiculous thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you laughed because you were able to go, it's like, oh, dude, well, all oh, those crazy black jokes. That's so funny. Like, no one, and no one I thought about it. No one took that into their lives, I don't feel mm -hmm. like. But I think now you're conditioned to, like, right away, if you even heard that, you're like, before you keep going, like, this is hilarious, you go, this guy's done. <laughs> like, this guy's not going to work ever again in okay. a million years. Imagine having to follow the N-word song. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> fuck, he's doing that song again. I got to cut the Mexican song in my act, or it's not going to be able to follow it. I'd rather well, follow have that to than... think of a new one. Yeah, I got to. What else can I do with said N-words? I've gone through Chinese, all... Chinese, Chinese, Ching, Chine. I've gone through all the possibilities of terrible follows, <laughs> and the, the biggest has to be <laughs> Corey Feldman at Evening at the Improv. Wow. Back in like the late 80s, where he goes out and lip sings a song poorly. <laughs> well, not Corey. Well, he doesn't even hit. Not that he's not even Corey hitting. Corey Feldman? It's not that he's not mouthing all the late words. 80s. It's that even the words he is mouthing, oftentimes he'll just break into a clap with the microphone <laughs> that's not clearly, so he's not clearly singing. The voice never changes. And Corey Feldman, my favorite thing that he does in any performance I watch yeah, of his, yeah. and uh, he hates me. He's bringing all the weird What do you ladies. mean he hates you? He yeah. hates us. We've got, I mean, oh, you my, my Sirius XM show. Well, we went after him in a sense that I never believe anyone's <laughs> going to hear anything. I'm That's like, why would it be funny. on Corey Feldman's radar? We were. <laughs> and he does not love it. <laughs> and then he just keeps making music. Stop feeding me, dude. I mean, he's really feeding. He's feeding me. That's There's a lot, lot of food. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Corey, Corey will see at fucking the Limp Bizkit concert in, Ju in July, buddy. We're going. You can't keep us away from that one, dude. It's Limp Bizkit. You guys are like the uh, Opie and Anthony. What were they called? The pests? Oh, just they, drive them crazy? They, well, here's the thing. I don't love that. I wish we were off his radar oh. and didn't know. We just want to laugh at it kind of. We're not, of course, we're not you want to laugh at it quietly. Him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel bad that we're his boogeyman in some way because he's like turned down other people's podcasts and been like, I see you had those guys on and I'm not. And you're like, come on. Oh, dude. God. He but must... he's such a conspiracy lunatic. He goes, this feels like a setup. I'm like, <laughs> to do what? <laughs> I'm like, go do the podcast. Dude. I don't care. Like, what? I'm not stopping so you. Funny. I want you to flourish. Yeah, if yeah. you stop because of me, I don't get to laugh at this anymore. <laughs> Please continue. Um, but what he you does, think it would be hard to follow him though. What he, uh, well, no, the thing I would not want to follow the most is what he, oh. what he does though that I love is, um, beginning dancing, especially for a white person is the funniest. The only example anyone can look <laughs> up right now that I love is uh, the scene from, do you remember Teen Wolf, the movie Teen Wolf? Yeah. If you know Court McCown, you do. Of course. Um, you have so to. Too, yeah. he, he makes you watch it if you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get to that movie? sweet, you want to get to that sweet dick. Yeah, I you better watch, watch fucking Can't Buy Me Wolf. Love too. Yeah, God damn, that was a goodie. <laughs> um, but Cor yeah, so Teen Wolf uh, at the end, he's the wolf at the prom, and then the girl goes, "Can you not be the wolf for one second and <laughs> just be Scotty?" And they walk out to the dance floor, and it's just my. Me and Joe DeRose used to laugh this like all the time. Know, yeah. He just they just find a spot on the dance floor and then he just goes <laughs> <laughs> and starting and what Corey Feldman gives you in every performance, he comes out, he makes himself known, and then gets in the and then music starts and he goes. <clears throat> it's like whatever the beginning motion, it's just like so rehearsed and silly looking, and he is the best at it. But I would not want to follow it. Yeah, because you'd be laughing. Too no, you're not hard. gonna be able to make fun of him about it. You know, also what I mean? you wouldn't be able to breathe properly because you just you oh. think about it, and it oh. would just get you going again. God, could kill, God, God, spare me if we're in Denver or some kind of high altitude. I'll pass right out. <laughs>
I want to see him arm wrestle you and just be like, I fucking oh, yeah, hate yeah, you. Yeah, and yeah. Then, and no, he would create that scene. Let me tell you something. Where you're like, you're wearing a blue shirt, and wearing a blue shirt, and wearing a blue shirt. He would put me like, a, he would put me through a table like over the top. Why do you look like a vampire? You look like a vampire. Like, just go back. He, he's coarse with rage for Terrifying. me. Terrifying. <laughs> I, I see a picture Have in my head. Have you made a lot I, I of enemies a, or just him? Just him. I see a lot of pictures. <laughs> I see a lot of pictures in my head of me being bloody on a floor and him in a mm -hmm. in a general's like, uniform that doesn't uh, isn't for anything. <laughs> a no secret country. general's uniform just with one foot on top of me doing like the, this thing. <laughs> and then Fury's in the background playing air guitar. <laughs> yeah, it's air weird. Guitar. It's weird. Cool, it fell, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's up on the neck like <laughs> Van Halen. <laughs> I, I think that the, would work. The weirdest is like the two like strung out, pilled out white women that follow him everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. What are they? I don't know. They Slaves. like they're yeah, they're like they're getting sex trafficked. Well, he's got yeah. new. We've, we've gotten to talk to a few times, um former angels, Corey's angels. Yeah. Uh we've gotten to talk to a few of them before and it doesn't They get to retire? Well, it just turns out he's not the no pension, squeaky clean huh? fellow that he is. <laughs> It turns out all those girls in lingerie at his house aren't just girls he's putting through a program for fame. That's weird. He's having sex orgies and drugs with them. No. Yeah. I was, By force. I was upset, too. He's being forced to have sex with them. It's not all about Christ and country the way he tells you. <laughs> uh, make no mistake. I really don't know anything. I mean, I remember his movies, you could of fall course. Into, you could fall into a wonderful uh, uh, Yeah, I'm hole, afraid to course. watch it because I feel like I'll get, I'll get hooked. I'll get hooked. Get hooked. Treat yourself. I did the same thing with Yellowstone. I didn't want to believe it. And then I jumped in, and it's fantastic. There, it everyone good? was right. Is everyone was right. right. It's not right. just a Western. It's a good. It's good. You're not wrong. I feel the same way about Corey Feldman. Let yourself get it wrapped up. His opening thing. I want comes, to be an angel. I mean, comes, am I too old? Did I age out? What's happening? Get in the program. That? All right. But the times are tough. Age means nothing anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you can play the guitar or triangle, you do some light percussion work, you're in. You can get some, yeah, yeah, that's fine. A simple three, so four beat. Off beat. Yeah, off on like beat. three Percocet, just like playing, a, playing the belly drum. Yeah, just spaced out, hoping to God your clit ring heals because he likes clit rings. Dude, I got that. I got you, buddy. No problem. I got you, buddy. Fell dog. <laughs> When you get into my program, Dude, he's the best. But uh, but his intro when he comes on stage is great. One, he's playing weird places. <laughs> Sometimes they don't have his pro his projector right, so he's got this like Stop. big big screen projection of what he went his his intro he's worked on big time. Yeah, yeah. Of all the things he's done, his accomplishments, and right. then also he wants to have a lot of people he's worked with. And how that just starts dwindling, it's so long. It's a four minute video. I'm so and done. And then it'll be like you know in the beginning it's like has worked with, blah blah blah, and the worked with list starts it's, trickling fast. It goes quickly from like, has worked with Michael Jackson, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like Michael Damien, <laughs> who was a soap opera star who did a remake of Rock On <laughs> in the 80s. I, know, I never even heard that name. I you know the song, Rock, you know his version of Rock On though. I don't think so. Now nah, here's the thing though, you do. <laughs> oh no. It's the only version of Rock On you know. Rock On, hey kids, groove oh. queen, oh. Rock On. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty okay. good. Okay. Right. The reaction you guys had to that is the same one you're gonna have when it says on a screen has worked with Michael Damien. That's where you start going, who? <laughs> exactly. And then I'd by the Google end of the it. video, it's like he tripped over Fred Durst once. Uh, he bought a used car from Chris Rock. It's like none of it's it's nothing that's impressive anymore. And then he comes out with the fans blowing. Dude, it's great. Oh, it's so good. Those fans it's, blew his Canadian wife right back to Canada. There you go. No, he has actual fans, literal fans, not, not actual fans. He's got what? no fans. Oh, you know, yes, he's got <laughs> fans. Literal, 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 literal fans. fans. Yes, people but following it. No, no the people. fans there are people that me and other uh, hilarious people have sent there <laughs> to enjoy. But this I say this, glorious. and I say this every time as a performer. Yeah, yeah. I'm not he's a been here a lot. I'm so not, he might, uh, I'm might not come in tonight. He'd leave. He would leave. <laughs> He's uh, why uh, I'm not a hypocrite is uh, completely like he. Yes, no, listen. The guy owes me a fucking insult for sure if he wants to take a shot. Get but, him. Uh, get him. Yeah, well, Corey. we have a surprise for you, buddy. Bring Corey, can you come on in with your two stride on angels? I would love that. If he just moonwalked he through was smoke. <laughs> Just. He was at Paulie Shore's house and they just walked out. <laughs> they just spit roasted Jenny Dude, Jameson right? now. This is the guy, right? <laughs> hey, got Corey. you an early Dude, birthday right? present, buddy. <laughs> it's just me tied to a, a, a box spring. 
I like this. It's like whole hostile. Scenario. I like that too. Corey yeah, Feldman. Yeah. He's wearing just a doing twirls. Outfit. Yeah, he just twirls and hits me with like a, a cat, cattle prod or something. Please let me Thanks, just call Polly. my daughter Corey. <laughs> Let me call my daughter. Please, Corey, I'll say whatever you want. <laughs> Sam, the second best answer you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> but, those are, but I'm saying I'm not a hypocrite in that. I tell people, I go, no, flood this guy's shows. Give him good numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy yeah, your yeah, tickets. Yeah. And I tell them, I go, do not interrupt the show. Don't yell out stuff from our show. Smart. Don't I go, he's a performer. I go, go enjoy the glory yeah, of a guy who's is. delusional and goes, he gives a thousand percent. He... I've or, watched Rob Zombie perform so many times. I love Rob Zombie. Right. Great performer. He's he's not giving 110% every time. <laughs> he's no Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman gives a <laughs> thousand to every show. The crowd, the audience, when we filled up the Highline Ballroom in New York for him. You he, oh, he came out to Wait. a full show. Packed. It was his birthday show. He goes, he goes, guys, you know, on this tour, <laughs> on this tour oh, we've been boy. doing, we've been doing uh he goes, on this, on this very tour, we've been doing two and a half hour shows, uh, which is long. I know. He goes, and, uh, but today's my birthday, you know, so I want to hang out and party. So uh, <gasps> how do you guys feel if we do about three hours tonight? And the crowd goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at everybody with me, and I was like, we're staying. I go, we're staying for the whole thing. We, he'll never know this. Three we, hours one of with his, no material. What? Yeah, is he doing c covers? Um, is there, are these like three hours no, of originals? A lot of originals and some covers. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've watched but, Eddie Griffin for three hours. But I'll tell it's you not what, great. You might, I don't know if you remember some from the originals and covers as well. I don't know if you remember uh, from the <laughs> '90s, but one of Corey Feldman's uh, no hits was uh, <laughs> was a song called "What's Up with the Youth." Okay. He performed it on Howard Stern. And when there was a lull uh, on the show, because he has to change costumes a few times. Yeah. When there was a lull on the show, <laughs> it's very me, Sal Volcano, Dan Soder, <laughs> and I think David Tell was with us, we started just going like, when we knew his set list <clears throat> and yeah, the song yeah. wasn't on it. Yeah, yeah. And we went, what's up with the youth? What's, what's up, up with, with the youth? youth? What's up? What's up with the youth? What's, what's up with the, the youth? And the, I mean, 300 people, what's up? With? Like, he comes out and he goes... Well, I guess I know what song you guys want to hear. I think we get plenty. We changed the set list. We gave him the night of his life. He hates us so much. Why wow, you're loving? That's crazy. All right, we're gonna have to because he knows it's sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> you think he can feel it? <laughs> I, think, I didn't think, I think he probably did. Probably not during. Probably after. No, like, no, no, no. Why do we only sell tickets in New I York? I have had. I have made many of his shows wonderful, I'm sure. <laughs> People go, they send his pictures all the time, like, you'll never guess where I'm at, dude. And they love it. Oh, my God. That's so great. I mean, it, I, lo I do like, love... they're like, oh, it's like he fell. His microphone turned off. He yelled at his band. <laughs> the, the lights turned. He started the song over three times. Delusia is fun to watch. Like, when I, I've seen comics where you're like... You're serious right now? Like you're gonna keep with this? Like I've seen, but delusional he, plus, he takes it to yeah. Well, delusional plus uh, mental heavy drive. Ah, no, that's the thing. Wow, dude. that's interesting. Persistence, the persistence. More, I mean, yeah, we've seen it in drive. comedy that time. Persistence beats out talent sometimes, at least in the oh, short term. Ninety percent of the time, I'll you know say I mean? the that. People who are just I like see. the loudest wheel. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, okay, fine, you're in. I'm like. <laughs> I never did that with any point in my career. My teacher. Eventually, always... they were like, somebody was like, "You can't feature for so and so." I'm like, okay. "Can I headline then?" And they were like, "Yeah, sure." And I was like, "Oh, all right." I didn't know that was even Thank like. You. What yeah. do you do? I didn't go. I didn't graduate. I, was, I, was... I must have missed the ceremony. Am I <laughs> like a note I got or something? Coming up, everybody's. Uh, my teacher used to say, "Empty barrels make the most noise." So I didn't make. I was like, "Oh, I don't want to sound stupid, so let me be quiet." So we're in the basement of the comedy store. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. There's another Thank podcast coming. right with now the in the room with. Pit with the rest By the way, of the that barrels. was Nordstrom's just closing upstairs. <laughs> Sorry about the piano there for a second. <laughs> it was the whole time. I was like, is that going to play the whole show? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Corey, we love you. and uh, We love you. Yeah, we'll see. You should go to a, a, a Big J show. Please. And see. I'd roll the red carpet. I have said a million times. It's crazy that he knows who we are. It's yeah. crazy that he's mad at us because I promise you, if he walked into any room I was in, I would be like, it's Corey fucking Valley. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> the Lost Boys top five movies of all time in my life. Not wrong. Not I, wrong. I genuinely love the Same. Lost Boys. Still do. I don't know. So like, a, the era, do you know Lost Boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, making sure the way you said it was like. Well, it's not like know, deeply not... ingrained in me. But it's, a, I, it's age wise. Yeah, it's just a little old. I'm 35. Yeah, so I'm, 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 yeah. I'm 11 years older than you. So it's the same thing when I was yeah. just like. 
eight years old one day or nine years old. I, I rented yeah. it and yeah. just kept playing it over yeah, and over. Yeah. This is the coolest thing ever. Huge. It was huge. Yeah. And I thought it was great. Um, it's always feel when that guy from ter the kid from Terminator comes here. Well, he's a grown ass man now. It's very weird. Eddie Furlong. Yeah, Eddie Furlong. Oh, Does yeah, he come yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I already kind of together though too. Oh yeah. yeah. He seems cool, but I'm always just like, I mean, you don't look like Eddie Furlong no more. But I'm like, that's fucking tight. But it's like, <laughs> but you're like, ah, you know. That was a little rough on you. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's not easy growing up in showbiz. I don't like meeting celebrities because I'm going to do the thing that I, you know what I mean? I'll meet Eddie Furlong and I'll be like, hasta la vista, baby. I don't know. I'll be over here. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that to people like Dice? Oh, you didn't do that when you met Dice. You were pretty cool with him. Did I? No, I've done it for a couple people. I remember getting off of a, well, I stopped myself from the RZA. We were both on a flight. Oh, the RZA would be We were both on a me, flight yeah. across from each other. And I didn't, I just kind of like, didn't my, you know, I looked, I took a picture like slowly for my daughter. I'm oh, like, hmm. really? <laughs> and then when he got off, I was happy I didn't talk to him because at baggage claim, he was talking, he was waiting for his bags. <laughs> this is at Newark. And, he's waiting, and there's just a fat, short, I'm going to guess Jewish guy. He was just like a balding, you know, like, okay. like dress pants, like in the middle of his big belly. Right. And, you know, just talk. And he just, he said, well, you know, I'm a big fan. And he's, and he's hitting all this stuff. He was like, you know, when meth broke out, like, I knew that was your genius. To right. He's going through all these things. And it's just a guy who's probably my age who's just, like, a different lifestyle than mine. It's, mm -hmm. like, a fan of his, I believe. But I was, like, watching the Riz's face while this guy's talking. He was, like, short, too. And Riz is kind of, like, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and I was, like, this isn't what the Riz wants. It's now another fat white guy. Going, yeah, like, yeah. your music really speaks to me. He's, like, I didn't make it for you. <laughs> I go, oh, for well. us, by us. I bitch. loved it, though. <laughs> I still loved it in all the words. Like, so I was, like, I'm glad I didn't talk to him. Then one, the other one I remember was a uh, Fat Joe was across from me on an airplane. Oh wow! Coming back yeah, from San Diego, he's pretty now. nice. Coming back from San Diego, I'm sure he's very nice. Oh. Not, these are never the people's fault. Okay, it's very rarely just someone being a piece of shit to me. Yeah, it's just my doof like gets in the way. And Fat Joe was a uh, I overthink it too much. Is what it is. Yeah, but Burke Kreischer's great. He's just like he, on that plane, he'd be like, "Where's it, dude? Unreal." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just loves bellies. Like they but, grew but, up but, together. But then who also is good at going like this? Because before you think this is super crazy, like take a peek at my Instagram. I'm famous also, and by and we should be friends. But you know, and like somehow that works a lot of the times. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I don't have that thing in me, but I was like the entire before I fell asleep and after I woke up. All I was thinking about was when we land and get off this plane, how am I saying hi to Fat Joe? <laughs> and what I conjured up in my head was, uh, remember the box in Philadelphia? It, oh, Video yeah. jukebox? Yep, yeah. Never spent money on it in my life. It was, a, it was a thing they put on TV at one point. It was a channel that would play music videos. No commercials, but right. it was relying on people oh, spending nice. a dollar and calling. And, and it's like TRL. Yeah, it, was like, it was a jukebox. Yeah. It was literally yeah. a jukebox mm -hmm. on TV. That's kind of tight. For videos and people did it enough that you just watched video jukebox and they would get some like what people would do. I think when young artists came out too, they would buy a bunch of them themselves, to make yeah. sure they get flooded a lot. And Fat Joe's first song was called Flow Joe. It's when he's more gangster still yeah. too. <laughs> it was called Flow Joe. And I go, "There's your line, dude. Hey man, nice to meet you. Big. F I've been a big. F I've been a fan of yours since Flow Joe came on the box in Philly." Here's my line. There it is. Got it. it comes out a little wordy. A little, little wordy. A lot of wordy. Undeniably. The whole thing was bad plan. <laughs> uh, none of this is me going like, here's where I was awesome. <laughs> this is the part where I actually kick it. <laughs> no, the whole thing. Shouldn't even thought about it. I'd be like, oh, it's Fat Joe and live my life. Um, I get off the plane far before him. Just because I got off, like, right, I just grabbed yeah. a quick bag and I think, you know, they got a bunch of, like, Louis Vuitton sacks and shit. Him and his people. And he comes out, and he's kind of just looking around. He walks over. He's just right there, prime for the bothering. Yeah. And I uh, I walk over to him, and I go, <laughs> I go, hey, man. He looks at me. I go, I go, hey, man, I just want to say, I'm not going to bother you, but I've been a huge fan, dude, since Flojo came on the box in Philadelphia when I was a kid. And he's just looking at me like kind of like goofy mm -hmm. face. And then it looks at me like he goes into his phone, like just ignoring me almost. And he just goes, what's that? And I went, <laughs> big fan. And I just, I, haul, I, I hauled ass. Then I turned the, then I, I haul ass so fast to get away from him uh, to not be weird. We get down, the, I get down the baggage claim. Nice. I turn a corner. There's a guy there who's, Big J. Holy fuck, dude. Oh, man. I, uh, can oh, I take, a, pic out about can you. I take a picture with you, blah, blah. And I'm like, 
uh-huh, dude, I'm trying to stall this. I'm like, what are you fan from, man? I'm just trying to stall because I'm like, please, Fat Joe, come around this corner and see someone caring about me and making a big deal. Never showed up. No. I don't know, that motherfucker must have had another entrance or something. No, I definitely. I didn't see him. I'm like, definitely. who the fuck's Fat Joe to see me being awesome? <laughs> Somebody's picking Instead his just shit just a fat up. idiot who goes, blah, 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 big fan, <laughs> and run away with my arms down by my side. <laughs> Not moving. Yeah. So oh, good. I'm an idiot. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving now. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so sad. You poor thing. <laughs> Wait, who are your comedy idols? Like, I know you've talked about Andrew, and their gloves aren't attributed to him, but, <laughs> which is totally fine. I love it. Shh, oh, talk. sorry. We're not, he don't listen. He don't now listen to podcast. Um, Dice for sure. I mean, like Dice was more like idealistic because he was a person I was a fan of. Right. And knew all of his stuff before I even thought about doing comedy. It was also so Philly. Oh yeah. It's been the first the Philly made him famous. I mean, yeah, says. TLA. Yeah. Um, that's where Dice Man Cometh was. But mm -hmm. yeah, so Dice for sure. And then really just kind of all of it. And then it was more like the inspirations came more like, like the people seeing it practical because I watched such a fan of all of it. Oh, yeah. And even the people where it's like George Carlin and stuff, mm -hmm. like George Carlin is like great. I know he's great. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's, but he's like the product of his catalog. Like to me, it was watching someone in real time. So it was like you know, Patrice, obviously. I mean, oh, God, the yeah. obvious is, but like Patrice... I mean, David Tell right? is just can't. fucking, it's just unbelievable. So good. His last special, so good. Someone told me the other day, they just, I don't know if it was something you just said like off the cuff on stage, but just, just go, you hear that new thing in Tell said the other day? It's just such a funny, like, like even the kinds of Kill Tony, do a one minute of comedy. I'm like, yeah, nothing yeah, I yeah. say, I don't know, introducing myself could take a minute. And I'm like, David Tell's got something. He say, uh, you know, he goes, everyone talks about Hitler's speeches, but what about his crowd work? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you don't need more than that to just send a room. You just let, if that was a kill Tony, just let the crowd laugh for the oh, next 40 yeah. seconds after you say that line and go, thank you. <laughs> he <laughs> like, did, he did kill Tony and he was so fucking good. Yeah, I bet. Perfect. And I, I, this is funny to watch, but like I saw the clip and he was, uh, Tony was introducing or like thanking at, it might've been the end. And he was talking to a tell and David Spade's here. So you're a tell and he's going, the greatest, you're the greatest comic. And I mean, like, I, it was almost like he was sawing fucking David Spade in half. I mean, you could see David, like, getting smaller. And I was like, but it's so hard because the tell is everybody's favorite. And everybody loves Spade, too. But it was just like, it's just a different. Yeah, I'm excited. It, to have my first time really ever like, hang with him will be uh, David Spade. Oh, yeah, on Spade's Foy great. On Foy Loader this summer, he's doing one of the weekends, I think. Oh, is so he really? For that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know yeah. him very well, he's but no I, Attell, I've always but... loved him. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's His so comedy's funny. always made me laugh so much. Yeah, he's David fucking Spade. hilarious. But, like, the, Attell's like the warrior. He's like... He's like the... Well, he's also, I was also in New York with him, and he, like, yeah. took me under his wing. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. He, he, oh, he, he took okay. care of me yeah. for a decade so well. So yeah, it's yeah. like, Space yeah. Space for the Memories is the best comedy album of all time. I think I've never might... heard anyone crush that fucking hard. He's just so goddamn good. Yeah. But, but I mean, I, I, I said, I've done practical. I started in the Black Circuit, and to watch somebody like Tony Roberts... Oh, yeah. Uh, ...come in That's and just great. be, like, such a... Mo I'm like, how does he do it? Just go, go. And it's also, it's funny, I tend to, like... Whether it be look up to you, call it, or like uh, idolize, or or, mm -hmm. or think it's like you know the Mount Rushmore people. It's very not what I do a lot of times. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, like me not too. What it's I like do. all over the place. Like you know, I always think it's you know. I mean, Nate Bargatze is like a yeah, he's squeaky clean, guy. squeaky but clean, and favorite. fucking uh, an un uh, unbelievable comic man. And I, I got to watch you guys that. came up with him. Yeah. I right? you get, brought him you on the road with me yeah, a bunch. Like, yeah, I took him to open for me a few times. So I mean, like, uh, yeah, he was in my wedding. <laughs> he was, <laughs> yeah. like, he was like one of the, my groomsmen. Like, right. It's so, and people don't. I think people have that same thing too. Because I'm such a good dirty comic and kind of associate with that world. And I think when I go to Nashville and Nate will come and like pop on the last few minutes with me at my show and like yeah. we'll tell stories or whatever, people are like. You're friends with Nate Bargatze. <laughs> Did he get sober? It's like, or yeah, I don't know if decide, yeah, it's like I don't know if uh, do I don't know if friendships are decided on like people curse or not. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, they're not. And it, but it's you guys are two total. Of course, opposite, yeah, of course, yeah. But I always admire when somebody can be clean because I'm a fucking but trash. I, well, that's pig. what I was gonna say. Also, Sorry. you you tend to. It's why I said why I love, especially when I started comedy. How much I cherish bringing those jackass DVDs in the yeah, road yeah. with me. <laughs> So I could watch them, and how much I loved uh, and love still Impractical Jokers, yeah. the, the concept of that show, unjudgeable comedy. Yeah. So I also feel that way when I watch somebody like Nate. Like I go, mm -hmm. I, this isn't even like oh. it's not even Nate's getting like 
Nico, this is not me. It's like, of course. No, yes. Give what are you going to write yeah. for, for the Tonight Show? You don't have a joke to go work on the Tonight Show. I'm like, you're right. I'm not even going for that same thing. Did you say pussy on NBC? Yeah. No. Fuck. But I've been are doing you sure? It, and you've been doing this a long time. I've been doing it for a long time also to see, like, it's also a way you learn how to like, fight like your envy and stuff. Like, yeah. Every time I was able to get through that, like, SNL was a big one I had to get over because it started being people you know getting SNL. Sure. And you're like, what the fuck? The really only thing you're upset about is their life financially changing. Because yeah, yeah. Right, without it back to be like, well, I wasn't auditioning for fuck. I don't do impressions and <laughs> fucking yeah. characters. What am I, I going to be on a sketch show? Like, I've never done a sketch in my life. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't do, but I'm like, but some people just do stand-up and get on SNL. I'm like, and then what? <laughs> If they're yeah, like, right. Jay, write a news uh, weekend update piece. Like, huh? <laughs> Today? <laughs> About what? Or do I get like right two weeks? Now? I'm always, say, yeah, every time I get a packet, I'm like, what do I get? Like three, yeah. four weeks? So like you have two days. He goes, like, can I say, no. Not why I do comedy. He goes, can I say chink cunt in this? <laughs> no? All right. Shit. Back to the drawing board, gang. <laughs> No N words. Hard yeah, if R's I don't say N word, but I do say colored, that'll fly, right? <laughs> no? This is hard. Okay, so back to the laboratory, <laughs> gang. Back to the lab. Yeah, again. come kick oh. my cage when dinner time, huh? We'll be back there trying to take all the F words out of anything I think of. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so crazy because you, like, I. That's what I'm saying. I could watch and admire like Nate. I go crazy from him. Bob Newhart was like one of my favorites. People are like, what? I'm like, yeah. It's just such a weird way of thinking, or a good, sure. like a, a a clean way of thinking. I'm like, how do you do that? Do you just drink peroxide. How do you clean it up? Uh, me and Kurt always. Worked well together. It's funny, more on like his joke because like uh -huh. I always found it interesting. That I think writers, like like pure writers, Metzger's a great writer, unreal, fuck, it's genius. But I'm saying like, when yeah. pure writers are also the least bitchy or or shitty about taking writing help. Right. I don't like writing help because <laughs> I'm like, well, because it's because I suck. The pride, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, well, clearly it's like I couldn't do this, so I gotta tell their jokes <laughs> instead, and I just. But people always think of it. Me and Kurt was. No one's hear what I have to say. So. But Kurt was great because I'm so like, like I need somebody to kind of drive me out of just everything being like a. How can we take a new approach on a tit fuck joke? <laughs> it's like they probably all been done. Hold on a second. Saw, That's a big Garland joke. <laughs> sure, so you gotta calm yeah, down. Is this was this was what the beef is about. Sky Sky trash. Trash. <laughs> um. But it is so funny. But when Kurt would like, I used to love like watching Kurt use like a tag or something I would give him mm -hmm. because it's a concept that I'm like, well, I was never going to write a joke about this. So <laughs> Kurt was always good to call me. He'd be right, like, right. he goes, let's watch this documentary on the black mamba snake. It, it actually gets <laughs> up on its tail to bite people in the face. And I'm like, okay, I could work with that now that you've given me the tent poles. <laughs> like, I can give him something funny yeah, yeah, for yeah, But yeah, I'm yeah. like, in my mind, he's like, I'm trying to write a new joke. He goes, have you thought about uh, sex or blowjobs or whatever? <laughs> Anything maybe on some Does racism? The black Mamba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes, <laughs> black Mamba. He goes, okay, maybe a joke about it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Having an extra bone in its tail Does to it? stay, jump higher. <laughs> Jay, I'm trying to stay away from the racism stuff. Uh, oh. Okay. Got it. Got okay. it. Okay. Uh, well, this is good. This is why we're doing this. What's the difference between a white mama and a black mama? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, brace stuff. No. Two hundred credit points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they kill harder. <laughs> the black mom always kills harder. <laughs> um, oh my god! But so now you started in Philly. How long were you there before you went to New York? Just about two years. Okay. Two years ago in Philly and like the black circuit. Like so, we would go to New York. Yeah. For a while, and I moved to New York. the The only haste I put on moving really was. Um, because Kevin, it was me and Kevin and Keith Robinson, Kevin Hart and Keith Robinson yeah. driving up every day from Philly. And then Kev started to pop. And it was going to be a kind of calling him out to L.A. But that was still after this. But what happened really was 9-11. Uh, like 9-11 made what was an hour and a half up and an hour and a half back. Or sometimes two hours up with traffic yeah. and, and an hour and a half back six days a week. Became like three and a half hours. Like, wow. Up. So, like, then it became like, all right, I got to move yeah. to New York. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. It's like, this is... Yeah, I can't do this. It's counterproductive now, yeah. yeah. It's getting home at, like, 6 a.m. and leaving at 3 p.m. to go to Exactly. That's crazy. No, and I wasn't even doing spots. It was more like to hang and maybe get sure. an open mic or something like that. We were just kind of like... We would go up with Keith, and Keith would host the cellar all night. Mm -hmm. And then me and Kev would run around and try to do, like... Anything. There was no pod game. It was, like, open mics right. and whatever shows. That's so crazy. And then, so now you're in New York and no interest to go to L.A. Like, no... Just... I didn't even know what to think. Well, to me, I was still like, 
such a baby, like, with that stuff. I was, I started at 19, so I was pretty young. Yeah. I remember going to New York. I was like, but it's so far from my mommy. <laughs> And people are like, you should go out to L.A. I go, even people are like, you should go out to L.A. for pilot season. I'm like, three months, but my mommy. <laughs> 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 what about my friends that I already know and that are yeah. here? It was like, this is too new and scary yeah, yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. I was never like a go away to camp kid or not like that. No, I was same. always like, eh, I kind of like, like what I like and know what I like, and it's all right here. I'm just going to say in this area. You don't really have to explore out there. It's a Philly though. thing, I think, Yeah, I didn't want to I didn't want to go. Oh, no, for sure. I mean, most of my friends are, are still Philly, local Philly. Not a lot of people got out. Yeah, when I go home, everybody, my mom not only lives in, still in the same row home we grew up everybody else lives up the street or around the corner yeah, so it's yeah. like going back in time you're like oh we just got older I yeah. get it but it's oh, the same shit and but uh, like the comedy store as far as that like you had no interest in like oh well, no it did once I came out I mean the first once you came out once I came out and I was like I said it took a while the, the biggest catalyst for all of that making LA comfortable and when I'm coming out here for this week I was like oh nice we'll see you. it's gonna be a fun time yeah was Ari Shafir moving to oh, New York oh yeah yeah Ari yeah. Shafir bridged the gap yeah. And he made it so, like, when I came out here, like, I met Tony Hinchcliffe here at mm -hmm. the store years ago, and it was two people, like, you know, I, I overheard someone say, like, Tony Hinchcliffe to him, and I was like, okay, that's Tony Hinchcliffe. And then I go up there, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm Jay, you know, Jay Oakerson. And he's like, oh, yeah, Tony. And it, it's like, right away, it's like, let me take you out back and show you the sure. thing. It was like, Ari says, you know, it's like Ari's kind of the the conduit here. The liaison, two things. Yeah. yeah. So, like. It was, uh, that was very cool. I, then, since then, I've loved coming out here. Now, just living out here, it's like, I'm so based yeah. in my life. But it's like, to move out here, or anywhere, really. No, I thought no, about, I I thought about yeah. plenty of things, like Nashville or Austin. Austin, but, yeah. But my thing is just like, it's a real production. I have to get <laughs> Robert Kelly, Dave Smith, <laughs> Louis J. Gomez. Like, so many people got to move also. Yeah, yeah. Can you guys all, or it's like Because cool it doesn't work that way. I mean, it's, yeah. I think, didn't, didn't like Theo try that when he let, moved to Nashville? It was like, I'll still come back for the, and I think yeah. if like two months, yeah. you're like, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> like, going back. On my I'll limited chill. downtime, I'm going to take a five-hour flight to, like, yeah, go do a no. podcast. Is like, mm -mm. So I get it. So it's like, it's, it requires too much. So yeah, like, yeah. So I, I'm an East Coast guy. I'm fine with that. And it's great. I mean, look, New York. It's also a good excuse to come. You go, it's like, wow, yeah. it's the sun, winter time. It's so a might as well slight go to LA. thing yeah. to get away from. Yeah. yeah. A week or two, not anything yeah, yeah, yeah. longer. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming out here for like six months. That was my goal. And it's been a long fucking time. But <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go. We're going to see how it goes. Oh, if I lived that I'm here, lazy. I, 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 once I move, I'm not doing many it Many pros to coming mm -hmm. out here is just, if nothing else, like the one, Sirius XM is way nicer out here. Oh, yeah. Really? By far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the place is a it's interesting. dump in New York. <laughs> it's not really a dump, but it's just like, well, not it's the, hard to get not to. Not the Howard Stern part. It's beautiful. <laughs> I've done your show. I yeah. think it's great. Oh, yeah. Well, we make it look, we, we dial it up. That's why we keep the lights low. I was blown away by things in the studio like this. I go, oh, the top of this table's connected. <laughs> hey, I don't you don't have a leaf, do you? Yeah, there's no leaves. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all the leaves are brown here in Damn, California. My grandmother passed. I should have took her leaf table and all the leaves. <laughs> Passover was a three leaf I holiday. I hated it. I I mean I didn't do Yom Passover. Yom Kippur is a one leafer. Holidays when you had to do that fucking leaf. We have we still have a leaf table in the house. It's a, it's an improper system. It shouldn't open that tough. <laughs> ours ours comes out on the ends. So yeah, 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 I yeah, guess like, it's not yeah. a but, but you when you see the, the mechanism inside of a leaf table, <laughs> it's like an old it's like a it's like Rolex a clockwork. It's <laughs> yeah. crazy what's in there. The gears and metal, and like, there's so much involved. It's a guillotine. There's, a, there's, You're like, yeah, there's, like, there's like a, a cog that's yeah. like moving yeah, with like yeah, a bear yeah, trap. Yeah. You have to like pull it open. Yeah, <laughs> it goes, shouldn't this just slide up? Like, it doesn't seem like it's that difficult. <laughs> Ratchet noises, pink. <laughs> And then you and get the leaves, and then you got to go, <laughs> and yeah. then hope to God those little pegs line up. And your fingers aren't in there? <laughs> oh, yeah. A leaf. I've done that, yeah. Or my brother's fingers be like, whoosh. It's my grandmother best. had the best old-timey kitchen stuff. She had a... Is she West, even a thing, West, West Philly? Philly yeah. yeah, yeah. She had a thing on the... On the wall of the kitchen that was exclusively to vacuum seal <laughs> Ziploc bags, basically. No. Oh, She's like, like well, a... we didn't have this soup, so I'm going <sighs> to vacuum it and put it in the freezer. <laughs> Bizarre. But that's like hip. That's like a newer-ish... It I'd became say 80s. hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that thing was not hip. No. <laughs> now my grandmother like, died. Her yeah, kitchen was still in the 70s. Yeah, you that old soup from about two months ago? <laughs> 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 sealed? I do. I've kept it. Thank All you. we got to do is leave it out to the frost for we a couple hours. We freeze everything. Yeah. Freeze everything. <laughs> Those days ago, I live in New York now. You can't freeze anything. Why? 
Just <laughs> only dog food fits in there. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> So small, everything's so small. That's why we were laughing. Uh, we had Bert on Bonfire there, the Bert Kreischer. Mm -hmm. And he does, man. Talk about above and beyond. Their gift bag for like, thank you for being a part of it. Amazing. Is unreal, but it's really geared towards homeowners. <sighs> Because it's always like, hey, we got you one month of free pool cleaning. Just right. things you'll never like. Yeah. Hey, man, here's a coupon. Give this to Here's a coupon for the best vinyl siding you could have on your home. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Here's the perfect lawn chair. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> a disc for disc golf. Flip flop. These are all things you'll never need in New York City. Yes. A hot sauce that went bad in the bag. <laughs> 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 They're a little out of touch. And everything, I want, and everything I want to keep is stuff that my daughter just sees. And yeah. I'm like, and she just goes, you're never going to use this. I go, you're right. Take the goddamn Polaroid camera. <laughs> it did look neat, though. It's like, I want something from it this. I'll keep neat. the expired fucking chicken sauce yeah, or whatever there you gave go. me. But they did, it's <laughs> funny because Tom is out here. I don't know where exactly Tom's from. Tom's in Austin. No, no, no. But he lived out oh, here yeah. with yeah, yeah, yeah. And his wife is from here. So, yeah, they, they're bigger, a little more spacious. Mm -hmm. Even our the apartments here when I first oh, moved yeah, here. Because yeah. I looked in New York and it was like... You know, I can live in this glass for two grand, or I can mm -hmm. move to LA and get a two bedroom for eighteen hundred. So I oh, yeah. did that. Well, and then you go to your buddy who lives in Texas, and you're like, "You have a mansion now? How did you get a mansion?" They're like, "Yeah, it's <laughs> two hundred grand here. It's fucking." Insane. I mean, I, you're like, not wrong. Texas is insane. He's like, he, my, I went to his house, and he said, "Pick a bedroom." I was like, "How many bedrooms do I get to pick a bedroom? <laughs> did you want the East Wing or the West yeah, Wing?" Yeah, is this the Red fuck? Band? Yeah, this, this is a song. Oh my god! Oh, like, oh, it's Sonia. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, well, I think when I pay in rent. Like a mortgage, like yeah. in the Midwest, I would have like uh, servants. Acre? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could have the mayor's quarters. I would have to have a. I would have to have a quarters for my. Where's my camera? Yeah, white staff. <laughs> I'm not gonna have any black help. That's rude. You're not wrong. All Ukrainian. Actually, I'm gonna hire uh, all white staff, but one black person to run them. <laughs> Nice. There you go. And every day I'm going to go to You're my You're just going to exclude the Mexicans completely? Totally. Because that's rude. That's their They've neighborhood. They've had it too good for too long. <laughs> and every day I'm going to go, Darnell, yeah, don't you yeah. like bullying around these white motherfuckers? <laughs> Tell them to go to bed. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers go to bed now. That's right, Darnell. <laughs> Now, go tell me stories about women's faces when they see your big black penis. Oh, whoa, I like this. <laughs> That's my coffee talk. <laughs> now, coffee Darnell, talk. regale me with one of your stories of <laughs> making a woman bleed. I've heard rumors of this. Ooh. There, there was a, a comic that said, oh, a, a New York guy, he said, oh, I rented a house in Austin for a year. I was like, what? And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go down and do a couple shows. You know, I'll just go down back and forth. And I'm like, how fucking cheap is Austin? Like, I don't, is it Thailand cheap? Like, how cheap? It's going to change. If you don't, if people don't get down there in the next year or so, it's because it's already starting. They yeah, said, yeah. like, the rents are starting to become like, oh, this yeah. is a... Like, like, Nashville did it. Nashville yeah. priced itself out. Every, everyone made that move there, that one initial move, and then... Yeah. That's now, like... They're like, oh, I'm in Tennessee still. Even yeah, though yeah, Nashville's yeah. fun, I'm still in Tennessee. It's, but it's, and it's expensive. It's yeah. gotten more expensive now, and Austin's going to do that eventually, too. But no, yeah, it's right now. It, but also, I think, like... It's expensive if you're coming from Ohio. If you're making the move, yeah. like, I'm an Ohio oh, comic, sure. but I'm going to make the move to Austin, like, yeah. it might seem like Austin's pretty pricey. But I think if L.A. or New York, you're like... So, by the way, L.A., the nerve. By the way, I said 1800 I meant 800 I got a two-bedroom, two-bath for 850 Oh, wow. And so... Still? No, when oh. I first moved here in the dark ages. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying I saw the rent go, and uh, not until 2008. It was still, like pretty easy to get a place here, pretty reasonable, mm -hmm. way more reasonable than New York. And then here, after 2008, the recession, all of a sudden they were like, oh yeah, we're going to start up in the rent, up in the rent. And I was like, I see a little increase, but now I'm like, you need more culture for this well, yeah. fucking. New York did the move Fuck though too. You, they were like, LA. during COVID, they were like, we're a great city and guys, apartments are just so cheap, right? Like, like get in here because people were leaving in droves. Yeah, so they yeah, were yeah. like, Guys, we'll give you a D. And they did. We even the place we moved, we got suckered into one. We're like, I'll yeah, but move then there. didn't they jump it up after a while? It was probably rent control. Far more than it was before <laughs> COVID. They go, what they do is they go, hey, you don't mind after this two year COVID yeah. lease if we give you, I don't know, let's call it a $3,000 increase in rent. Yeah, yeah. everybody was you're like, like Fuck. what is that? They go, well, that's, you see, the markup from the original that we mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, so it hits you so much. You know that's what I mean? That's exactly what happened in the whole country. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So they got you like that. Milk but new, is now three. 
thousand dollars. Right, but New York looks like uh, the problem. Like they're crazy because the same thing as L.A. It ain't back. There's no. no more. There's no more twenty four hour New York anymore. It's done. No. I said it. You, you're looking for food. If you're looking for food, it's so hard you now. know. After 11 p.m., 10 p.m. in New York, you're, it's anywhere over America. You're going to get Taco Bell, Wendy's, yep. McDonald's, yep. or the shittiest pizza that does stay open. <laughs> or the, But it's not like, it used to be like 3 in the morning. Yeah. You can go like, yeah. that Italian place we love still delivering. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it's crazy. And that's just, that's all gone. Well, remember, and they, but, but now they've made the prices like crazy expensive because they're just trying to recoup. But like, I remember in L.A. we man. passed a bill that we're going to be open until 4 a.m., Oh, yeah, yeah. And then that that everyone was right just like, away. nah, now we're not doing that. I was like, didn't we all vote that this was going to happen? And then it just <laughs> didn't happen. That Which went I still don't understand. Right away. It's unbelievable. Yeah. We, it, West Hollywood has never been 24 hours. It's not allowed to be. There's a law. West Hollywood can't be 24 hours. There's no uh, CVS, nothing. Everything closes really? at midnight. Yeah. If you go to Beverly Hills or Hollywood, you know, outside of the West Hollywood, yeah. then you can get 24 hour. But that's. A CVS or whatever. So funny, Alex. There's 24-hour Starbucks on Highland. It's very exciting. Well, there's 24-hour in both places. Aggressive homeless. <laughs> <laughs> they might be right, actually. And they they're want just, your stuff and they want your life. They're starving. <laughs> <laughs> they're starving. It's after midnight. They can't get any food. But they're so tan and built. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. Ah. I always say that. They look like extras in a movie 300. <laughs> Where are you guys coming from? <laughs> yeah. Let me in your tent, All I do is daddy. work out on the beach and beg people for change. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco just called me. I'm not answering. Is he coming? You hope he yeah, comes. He might tonight. be here tonight. If he saw you're on the list, our friend Rocco Stowe. Do you know Rocco? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did he date they Margaret Cho for a little? Okay, that's rude. But we're not going to yes. list everybody he dated. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a hell of a. It's just, we don't have to list all of them. That's the biggie. <laughs> That's the one we never quite got. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember who this guy is. Everyone was like, that guy fucking making out with Margaret Cho right now? Weren't you Rocco, guys all started together, right? Rocco used to call models fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one day on Instagram, we were all back in New York. We just saw Rocco and Margaret Cho. Like, <laughs> Come with the what? <laughs> <laughs> and Rocco, so funny, so Philly. Yeah, he's like, hey, him. I'm going to be in Thailand for eight weeks doing a tour. <laughs> <laughs> I speak Thai now, do you? Do you? <laughs> hey, I'm doing kabuki theater. With... <laughs> kabuki theater. <laughs> Me and Margaret. We got... <laughs> Me and my wife now. I make it a gravy. And then <laughs> she puts the dumplings in the gravy. He would just get up and like, he's like, every day he'll be like, hey, I'm making gravy. I'm like, I'm not coming over. You do anal all the time. I'm not coming over. I don't want your gravy. <laughs> He gets Smells so it. mad. He odor gets in here. so Bleachy. fucking mad at me. Well, I love what he does because he's a great cook. Rocco. He really is. He's a fantastic cook. Yeah. And he does things where he's, he's trying to lure me, but it's like on things where it's like, Rocco, it's not that I don't want to eat this delicious food. It's like, in the after, I mean, out here like, doing like this festival, you know what I mean? And he's like showing me pictures. He goes, here's me making the crust for the homemade pizza. <laughs> you're like, I want the pizza, Rocco. You're selling the wrong sale. You should be trying to get me to quit my job is the issue. <laughs> If I don't quit my job, I have to go to the job, and then yeah, I can't yeah, be part yeah. of your gravy day. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck all knows I want it. <laughs> and then he goes, but also many times he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, I'll make, I'll bring it to you. He goes, I'll bring it to the comedy store for you. I go, Rocco, please don't make me be the fat guy walking around with gravy. <laughs> just, just a, a bag, a, a bag of a gravy, bag. even worse. <laughs> <laughs> like a it's wine bag. <laughs> He's got a bag of gravy. It's labeled. <laughs> For Big J. <laughs> and my friend Mike Fenoy told me a story one time about doing some like shit like C Room Comedy Club. And like, uh -huh. the big thing is that they have this uh I like a Mike. pulled pork. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah. They have a pulled pork. And that's the big thing at the end of the night. He was like, hey, Where was it? In Philly? No, no. Oh, no, that's a just, big Philly pulled pork. Yeah, no, it was just this place that made their pulled pork. It was somewhere at the end of the show, he was like, is it possible to get some like food to go? He goes, dude, absolutely. But I guess all they make is this pulled pork. <laughs> and he just gave him a Ziploc bag. Oh my God. Full of wet pulled pork. <laughs> By the way, not a Ziploc bag where you if you're gonna do that, people get you can get fluid in a big Ziploc bag, but it's gotta be this one. The double. The machine the, the yeah. little uh what do like you call your it? grandma. <laughs> no, but it's got you know, but it's gotta be the little thing on it. Yeah. That's got, you know, you run it across and sure. it seals it. Sure. No. He had to put he had a fluid roll? in a bag. And then set it down gently to not come out of the back, and then do the yellow and blue make oh, green. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like a, oh, no, 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 no. You can't no, make no. somebody open up a fluid Ziploc bag <laughs> that goes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I thought it was going to be the one that people put like a uh, gram of weed in. No, you know? oh, <laughs> shit. He was like, yeah, I got you. Don't worry about it. He like, takes a lighter to the top of it. rolled it. it. <laughs> There you go. We got some pulled pork oh, yeah. for you. I got my cigarette cellophane if you want to throw me a couple chicken tenders. <laughs> you can do that with the heat. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That's nice. Oh. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a big foodie, Rocco. He's crazy. But uh, uh, anything but comedy he'll do. And, uh, <laughs> I torment him. But you guys started together, right? Like you guys. Yeah, you we were all on the same time in Philly. DeRosa. Yeah. Two? Rosa, Mike Vecchione. Wow. And, I can't uh, see Vecchione and Rock all hanging out. And Metzger. I think they, like, sort of missed each other. Good. Yeah, yeah. Vecchione's you know, a nice boy. <laughs> I think Rocco came to New York, and then Vecchione started yeah, kind of yeah, in yeah. Philly. And they was kind of, I mean, I know who each other are, but, like, I think they just missed each other. Mm -hmm. But, no, but, like, me, like, as far as people that were going, like, like weekly at the same time, like, uh, yeah, Kevin Hart, uh, me, Metzger, Kurt Metzger, Rocco. Was there. <laughs> it was such a weird grouping. Yeah, it really And is. then I could go through the rest of the names. It would be funny. <laughs> Beefy Funny. Uh, <laughs> There's always Sun names. 725. Yeah, yeah. Two Ray. Two Ray was Two Ray, part Ray of was your group? last night. He oh, was yeah. Well, Two Ray was the guy. I was so excited. Two Ray was the guy who first put me on stage. He, he kind of like ran that laugh house, like open yeah. mic. Talk about open mic. That is, it was felonious to call that open mic. <laughs> it was so, you know, if you could do well in the black rooms, yeah. it was so a not fair good thing because then you found out what really open mic was this was promoted by the hip hop station yeah, yeah. we had one of those crazy 250 sold out 250 seats every week the DJ and Toure was the host and he ran it he was killing it and, and he's, it was, he's full of energy so he's yeah so like uh, and just so like he's great Toure you know and he was just doing so yeah. good and you go up there and when you kill I mean you killed in front of a sold out hyped up Def Jam style yeah. room yeah and then when I started going to New York and they were like you're up next there's two comics, a Dutch guy, <laughs> and uh, a couple of homeless, I think, but they did buy a drink, so they're in there. And you're like, okay, what? I go, well, tell the DJ I need him to play the <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Let the DJ know, though, that I have a couple boom, music boom, cues, boom, 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 and I'm going to do a thing where I go like, oh, you can do anything to this song, right, DJ? <laughs> and I go, uh, No. <laughs> It's so good. Yeah, when people come from a place with a real open mic, like a fun open mic like that, it's hard to hit the real open mic. Because I worked Some of they it. actually are. Just yeah, these yeah, like yeah. shitty situations. I worked the fucking open mic here for a long time as a waitress. And I had to quit because I started learning the homeless guy's acts. <laughs> and I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I could still do them. I could still, if I see them, some of them are dead. Are you talking Robert Everbaya right now? Yeah, well, he, Robert's dead. But yeah, I knew all of Robert. And this You're other guy, jokes for Gaylord him, you go, Dingler. If you hate uh, this, oh, yeah. you should see what yesterday's clothes smelled like. A machine ripped his leg <laughs> off. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself in front of everybody. And that's when my family left. <laughs> How do I punch that up? <laughs> Can you punch that up for me? That'd be yeah. cool. Hey, guys, it's a workshop. <laughs> it's a workshop. Got a pretty big drug problem. Yeah. I think most of my wounds are infected. <laughs> How can I, like, looks like the misdirect there. <laughs> we had a guy that um, was missing a face. I think he shot his face off. We don't know. We used to call him the faceless comic. They brought him up. I wasn't a comic at this point. I'm just a waitress, like, the fuck is that guy gonna do? He goes, doesn't talk about it at all. At this point, Ari's still here. Everybody, like Jeff Danish, Ryan O'Neill, like, but what's wrong? Why are you saying anything? What happened to your face? You didn't tell anybody what happened to your face? Like, it, it just all went after this guy and he just would walk away. And every night, he'd come, every Sunday, he'd come back and do bits. Missing a fucking face and never said anything. He's about like, soup's it. Are sure hard to eat, isn't it, guys? <laughs> you know? Water, too. Jesus, those liquids. Anybody else? What are they, tissues? How do you use those? <laughs> you know, I mean, you have it a gaping hole in your face. How's it hard to clean? Anybody else? Yeah, we had. <laughs> I love a beautiful moment as much as the next guy, but there's something. It's probably the most like harsh thing I've ever said that I kind of like mean the thing that I mean it is like, it, it, like I'll never be able to dunk. A basketball okay. ever so like there's no reason to put me in the dunk contest because <laughs> i can't okay when someone's biggest con issue with their debil like uh, disability is not being able to communicate i have a hard time seeing how that can go for like a long yeah. set of time yeah. <laughs> and i love the beautiful i'm all i'll get the goosebumps yeah, get it all like, in there but i remember i was in edmonton once 
and they had to move the tables in front of the table because there's there no ramp, and the guy was in a wheelchair that was coming up. And he didn't, I guess he, we'll call it told jokes. Okay. But what he did was moan and groan in the cadence of what Stop. jokes would be. He was like, <laughs> and everybody goes, ah. and I go, why, what's this Shut big ruse, the charade we're all doing? <laughs> why are we, it's like, okay, it's, 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 it's like, please tell me this is the only time he's going to do it, and this was his dream, and, we, and I'll stand and cheer yeah. with him. But they're like, back again for his seventh week is the winner of newest no. guy. You know, no, it wasn't that, but it was like something the effect of like, they knew that the next guy, oh, this is the guy yes, we had to move back? the stuff for. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and, it's just, it, and oh me and Dave God. were like, I, mean, I, I swear I was bleeding on my chin. I was biting my <laughs> lips so hard. It was like, I'm like, me and Dave were like, come on. Because we got a day early to go to Edmonton. So me and Dave Smith were like, let's go to the open mic, dude. And I just remember oh, that. like, tremendous. But I mean, like, I'm also even doing a fairness and saying like to lean in for the punchline because it wasn't right. that. He did all the inflection, but just from like one, it was like this, you know, like the from looking off angle. in the space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even have the head turn. Are you? <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> it's not a make a wish. <laughs> no, this guy's stop. coming back. <laughs> yeah. Stop. <laughs> I don't what think he, he wants to be up there. He's trying to communicate. What if he only got up? <laughs> I don't know. It's he wants question. to get off. What if he's yeah. asking it's, for help and they keep putting yeah, him yeah, on yeah. stage? It They're like, too, I know. It he... reads too much that I am uh, anti-disabled people because <laughs> I am not. But I do not like playing the game of like, how about no. we, uh, we did a thing on our, I think we got shit for this one, one of our podcasts about, uh, I think Shane Gillis was on it too. It was a pretty funny <laughs> one. It was one of the ones we had to apologize to the person ultimately. Oh, no. Because the kid's family. But we watched the video that would have never gone back to him if, like, right. the people who hate it are like, look at this, like, being look pieces of shit. Doing. Yeah, you're almost like, why would you show that to them? Yeah. It's not for them. But there was one where it was like a Diego Sanchez, who was a UFC fighter. Okay. He's sort of like retired now, I guess, but he was around for a long time. And a couple years ago, they had him did a fight, like a charity fighting thing where he fought this kid with Down syndrome. <laughs> and the Down syndrome kid dropped him four times. It's tapes, this whole event, it's like a thing, and everyone's cheering. It's and a I different go, strength. Who's this for? No, it's not a different strength. He just let him do it. He's just taking dives. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, this kid's going this, this kid's going. It's a different strength. Eh, and he's going, ah! Oh, 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 oh In okay. front of an audience. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Who is this for? <laughs> like, right. Do you want this kid to go out in the world without going like, I just beat Diego Lopez. <laughs> hey, faggot, what are you looking at? And you're like, no, 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 that was fake. That guy took a dive. <laughs> he starts getting bold in the world. Hey, pussy. I thought your girlfriend would look better sitting on my face. <laughs> she could slide right This off. kid's crazy. He thinks he beat up Diego Lopez. He thinks he beat up Diego Sanchez. <laughs> Wait. Get your hands off me, pussy. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> Smoking Wait a around the conference, big as suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> you think I knocked out Diego Sanchez? I can't see with you, yeah. nice pussy. Uh, <laughs> I really thought you meant he got in the ring and just fucking went crazy. No, like, no, like, no he just so got the ring of down syndrome. Like you took around his Capri while, Sun uh, away or kept something. Falling in front of him. Oh man, that's ridiculous. And he cheered, and his mom's gonna go. You just beat up a former UFC champion, oh, baby. My God, you can't kill me, shit, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Time for your meds? Is it, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You said that kid on a terrible trajectory. <laughs> oh, there was one comic that uh, I, I used to run a show, so and they were in a wheelchair, and they would ask that we pick them up and put them on stage in the wheelchair. So it would Same be like this. me and my three friends would like have to like... Paul Bear, yeah, your first Paul Bear, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on the stage, like it's. It Would it be gnarly. a Paul Bear after, like when you're taking him off the stage after he dies? <laughs> God bless him, though. I mean, just <laughs> they were good, but it was just like, what? I, I, okay, I didn't know I had to do it's this. Also bad when the intro, when, crazy. intro when, it, when an intro has to be slowed down <laughs> for a, a handicap. I don't. I don't. I, that's where I feel bad for the perform themselves because it's like. It's a spectacle, dude. It's like, remember the robot came out in Rocky IV for Paulie's birthday? <laughs> it's like all the lights go down. Like, Happy birthday, Paulie. <laughs> <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have some. You can't have like awesome, because I'm TNT. <laughs> while you're sitting there, while grown men place you on the stage. <laughs> I'm dynamite. TNT. I'm dynamite. TNT. <laughs> 
Shut up. <laughs> anyway, uh, how you guys doing out there? <laughs> Place you down. <laughs> Hey, can someone move my ass a little left? I'm on something. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, L.A. is nice. <laughs> we had a, uh, a... I know I always talk about this, but we had um, Tanya Lee Davis. You remember her? Mm -hmm. So she's a little person. And she would use a chair. She would stand on this chair sometimes. So the OR stage is real low. And so uh, then she, you know, get down. She do this bit about... She goes, white girl. And then she turns you out a big ass. She'd be like, black girl. You know, it was cute. She was very mm -hmm. funny. But, and she'd get off and Mitzi loved her. she put her on all the time. And she, But Mitzi would always put Holtzman on after her. And so she'd get down and she couldn't move the chair. So Holtzman would kick it off the fucking stage <laughs> as she's like waddling all over the terrible. Sorry, Tanya, you know you're great. But Holtzman would be like, what, what is this shit? What is this, a circus? Who's next, a bearded woman? <laughs> <laughs> He would have flipped the fuck out. And Mitzi would just be screaming, laughing in the back. And poor Tanya would be walking <laughs> out of the room yet. Just crushing She's them. She's still in the she room. She just crushed. She's and then she'd be walking. <laughs> <laughs> she just annihilated the room and Holtzman just took her like nothing. Just a fucking pain in the ass there. no idea. She's moving around like a Roomba. He's like, she's out of the room, right? Fuck that midget. He's like, she's still here, dude. She's still here. It's her little hair. <laughs> Bumping into stuff. You know what I'm talking It's like a, yeah, it's like when you see an arrow shut up like a wheat field. You only know because everyone's going like this. Every once in a while someone's, oh. Whoa. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> So he goes, where's she at? Oh, hey, oh, whoa. <laughs> See, you are a good actor. <laughs> oh. Or do I have to go? Yeah. Are we done? <clears throat> sure, All right, here. we can wrap it up. I, I love you. I could be here all day. Um... Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for coming. Uh, I was just seeing the time. You're starting at... Is that what you used to look like? No okay, don't do that. That's my sister, you oh. piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you've away. done Thanks a lot, lot of work on yourself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the only person that would laugh at that is my sister and these <laughs> fucking animals over here. <laughs> 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 he just sees my screensaver. So what you used to look like? I was yeah. like, his motivation or something? Yo, don't let Billy <laughs> hear that sister. shit. Don't let Billy hear that shit back. That's oh, what yeah. it used to look like. I, <laughs> I, asked what you, I thought it was going a different direction. <laughs> and I feel bad that we all know what I mean when I say that. I thought maybe your sister was like, uh, like you had a younger sister like or something. And that was like, like <laughs> smoking hot in the picture or something. Anyway, is that how you used to look? Is that how you used to look like? He goes, wow, you really pulled your shit together. <laughs> She's gone. Oh, from that? <laughs> it's not from that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry for every reason you think of <laughs> Oh my god yeah. I am very sorry about your sister though Thank you, Billy the kid will fuck you up yeah, so I, mean, I swear to you First thing through my head he goes I don't want Billy to get a hold of this I don't even know Billy and I fear him Yeah, Rocco's always afraid of him He's like hey uh, listen I can't hang out after the show We would do shows in Philly like Christmas, Thanksgiving Whatever just oh, like yeah. local no, shows Rocco's what I tell me. He, goes, he goes yeah Billy don't fuck around <laughs> It's the one serious Rocco thing. I'll be goes, yeah, no, Billy's serious. He don't fuck around. I'm like, okay, well, I'll leave that alone. One time he called in. I was doing a, a live podcast with Jeff Danish, Ryan O'Neill, Rick Ingram. And so we're all, it was um, a, all things comedy festival. And so Billy called and I go, and they go answer it. And I was like, are you sure? And I did. And then somebody says something cocky and Billy goes, the fuck did he just say? And the whole room got quiet. And they were like, yeah, you can hang up now. You can hang up. And I was just like, Sorry, but you can't do that. They don't understand podcasts. They don't understand yeah. what we talk. We talk shit or we yeah. say yeah, weird yeah, yeah. shit. He just he immediately got fucking pissed off. What the fuck did he just say? <laughs> so I was like, all right, it. Fredo. That's and a so feeling. I'm gonna call <laughs> off dogs <laughs> yeah, yeah, that are going. Goes, yo, these guys fucking say because it's a friend that he's making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everything's just, fine. We know each other. We just straighten this shit out. <laughs> this guy's over here calling you fat. I go, yeah. Oh, he's he's a friend. He goes, all right. Oh, my God. I can't. R.I.P. Kathleen. Thanks a lot, Fury. R.I.P. Kathleen. <laughs> my girl. <laughs> that would make her laugh, though. <laughs> so so when you showed me the picture, I was like, damn it. That's how I think it was going. <laughs> um, all right. So where can people find you? I mean, we know where we can find you. Yeah, BigJComedy.com for uh, all Corey dates Feldman's and everything like that. Corey Feldman's house. Corey yeah. Feldman's house, hopefully, for a mixer. <laughs> Maybe an <laughs> afternoon <a> mixer. <laughs> Yeah, I'll show up. I'll be there. I'll be, come on. I think when he come sees on, my God. face, we're going to do this. 
<laughs> really? Uh, no, for sure not. <laughs> He's going to try to beat me with like Michael Jackson moonwalker moves. Yeah, yeah. Spin and go like that. <laughs> just see some, the force of music knocks me back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a long distance. Yeah, the gift. <laughs> that was the old moonwalker Genesis game. That was your movie. You with the force of music and people flew back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just for the record before you think I'm being uh, bitchy about this Corey Feldman thing his words me and Michael Jackson dance alike because we grew up dancing together and teaching each other these moves so take that before you feel crazy bad for this guy <laughs> he's the only one that didn't come out against Michael Jackson he's, he's like I didn't him. see that side of him <laughs> Everybody he's like yeah, he was behind you <laughs> <laughs> If I never saw him do that, uh, but mostly I was bent over in front of him, <laughs> learning dance moves. He said this is going to hurt, but that's what it takes. <laughs> that's what it takes to get your hips going. Life is pain, he said to me. And he said, bend over, I'm going to teach you a new move. You need to open your hips more. <laughs> yeah. You're being tense, he said to me. <laughs> it's like the dancing is relaxing. And I bit my bag. Grab your bag. Grab your bag. Hold it. That's how we do it. <laughs> he told me things were going to be all right. And then he donkey punched me. <laughs> it was a mind game, but it made me a better dancer. <laughs> oh, we're horrible people, and I love it. I love being we're horrible. This is where you do this. <laughs> yes. You we're take as close all your fancy to, Hollywood lights and shove them up your ass. Just we're as close the to hell as you can get <laughs> yeah. right here. At this. We just have one floor below us, and that's hell. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's Bonfire. Bonfire, Legion of Skanks. Legion of Skanks. Uh, XM, me and Robert Kelly, and Legion of Skanks, yes. me, Lewis, and Dave. Yes. On Gas Digital. Hell yeah. I'm excited to do Skank Fest this year. Sorry, Fury. <laughs> We got a uh, really fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked for the musical guest. We can't say it's a okay, surprise, good, but uh, good, it's good. A, it's a great one. And the best description I always give for it, I go, it's not necessarily like a where I'm as stoked for like the music. It's just like a gift to a fans. <laughs> as you're like, you guys are gonna be go nuts about this. It's Corey Feldman. Feldman. No, it's Corey Corey Feldman. Feldman. It's Corey yeah. Feldman. We got the angels. We couldn't afford Corey, but we got his angels. We got the angels. <laughs> and there's, somebody, there's maybe nobody we could afford more than Corey Feldman, but I will say he's not gonna say yes. <laughs> Uh, he would have the show of his career <laughs> at Skank Fest. He really would. He'll never sell more merch. Oh, everybody would be high watching him and loving it. Yes. He changed his whole tune. I bought his $250 box set. <laughs> that should owe me something. Comes in a shoe box set. I be able to, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. It's got blood like, on I it. I should give money into it early. If you gave money into it early, you get those. Like, you know when people fund movies? Yeah. Or you could be an executive producer on it. I should have been like, I want the, what's the tier where I just get to dance with them once? <laughs> oh, fuck. No cameras. Just a room <laughs> and me and him dancing out. Yeah, and everything ends with like a, it's a call to action. You just spin around and go, ah. And then he has to dance. And it'll be a whole thing, yes. Yeah, and then he knocks right me back with the, the force of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys are producing stuff here now. Can we throw it together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, company store's producing now, right? Yeah, right. We, we could do that we'll easily. Work we'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Maybe stop throwing money around these fancy mosaics. Yeah, hello. And your fucking uh, mid-level screen televisions. And these fucking plants. <laughs> I mean, we could do it without that. <laughs> It's a uh, succulent, though. You're gonna, you can't go wrong with those. <laughs> That's what they call me, a succulent. A succulent year-round? <laughs> You're good year-round? <laughs> That's what they should call women uh, who are going through uh, menopause when the period's over. Succulents? Succulents. Now they're year-round, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the suck, anyway. Uh, <laughs> it all still works. Get out over it. It all still works down there. <laughs> I think. I haven't had anything in it. <laughs> Theoretically, right, everything Eleanor, is the same. You're such a pig. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Fury, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. That was so thank fun. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. And it's your first time hanging out with Big J. Yeah. Now, don't creep him out, all right? I've been a big fan for a long time. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. I loved when you said uh, the tissue in a girl's butt were little G.I. Joe joints. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that stuck with me. I wanted to tell you that. I've been waiting for this to tell you. <laughs> it's, it's the curse of... A... It's the joke that stuck with you. <laughs> it's the curse of colorful storytelling. <laughs> Boy, I've had so many I've heard, G.I. Joe's. I can't jo remember that joke, but I do remember the smell of it. <laughs> I've had so many G.I. Joe joints in my house. <laughs> oh, pulling one out is just like, it's you tough, know, it's yeah. breaking the fourth wall. Do you wall. smoke it? <laughs> it's letting someone know they're drunk and you know they're drunk. It's that move when you go, it's like, all right, I'm going to break the wall here. Yeah, but when yeah. I pull this thing, she's going to feel a tug on her ass hair. 
And now we're here. <laughs> she didn't go, was that? I don't remember. Go, uh-huh. <laughs> what do you think it was? You had a little wax down here Should from when you got waxed or? earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Then you get together for a while, you just grab handfuls of ass hair. And yeah, like, yeah. Get rid of these. I got mine in Pull them a up like scrunchie I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, the vanity goes away after a while. You just let it all hang. It's exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here. Let's get Big J has to go do his show. And uh, don't forget to check out No Country for Old Women. Thank you guys for the support so far. Like, subscribe, the podcast, all that shit. You can leave a bad review, a good review. We don't give a shit, but we love you. Thank you. Thank you.